Where did we go in the South Pacific that we really loved? It got us thinking, what, what what are our favorite places? Like, So we made a little list and we thought we'd share it with you. Share it with you in a way that gives you the ability to go there as well. Beer? You're drinking white wine? Can you move over just a bit? Well, it's a prop. You gotta put it on the table. Oh, I was hiding and I was embarrassed. <laughs> I'm just a sailor, not an alcoholic. Okay, so we're in Plow. Can you believe it, Ben? Yeah, we're uh, we're done with the South Pacific. This is... It's quite sad, actually. I can't believe it. I think that's... Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to the South Pacific. Cheers Goodbye. South Pacific. First and last beer of the day. I just slurped my wine. You're like sweating on my arm. We're in Plow and Plow is in the North Pacific. It's hot as heck in Palau. Like it's it's very hot here. We're close to the equator. We just crossed the equator for the second time. It got us thinking, what what, what are our favorite places? So we made a little list, and we're gonna give you our top ten spots. And for each spot, we're gonna tell you <laughs> why it was our best spot, where it is, and how you can get there. How you can get there. So I basically started with like, oh, my favorite was this, and my second favorite was this. Written down every single place we'd been, and that's crazy. Like we couldn't put them all. So we've narrowed it down just slightly. And then I combined a few and we by no means stopped at every place We did kind of a one-two skip a few and that allowed us to spend a bit more time in some areas that we really really loved So where did we start? We left from Panama and the North Pacific and sailed across the equator and in our first stop in the South Pacific was the Galapagos it took us seven days to get to the Galapagos and then from the Galapagos, it took us 19 days to get to the Marquesas. So once you're in the Marquesas, you're basically checked into French Polynesia, which is a huge country. It has Marquesas to Amotu's societies. Yeah, and then there's Gambier Island. And then from the Marquesas, we meandered down a little bit to the two Amotus, which are all these beautiful atolls. And then from French Polynesia, you have to make it somewhere safe for cyclone season. You can stay in French Polynesia. A lot of the areas there are actually cyclone free. But we had just made a decision at some point to head to New Zealand. So then it was like a mad sprint down to New Zealand in some crazy ass weather. It's crazy. Yeah. It, it's a long way. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's a lot of miles. How many miles exactly? Oh, I don't know. I lost count. Like, day, we'll we'll day figure two. it out and he'll do a voiceover. It's all good. And then we started again the next season and we sailed up to Fiji instead of Tonga. New Zealand to Fiji, Fiji to Vanuatu, and Vanuatu then to Papua New Guinea, where we headed north and cross the equator again, and now we're in Palau. Without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a drum roll. I have a, uh, I have a nine-string quartet inside with, <laughs> with a drummer. Okay, <laughs> go. All right. Okay, big sound effects. All right. Number ten, Moria. Moria is close to Tahiti. We loved that place. It had a civilization that had beauty underwater, above water in the mountains. Did this insane hike there. And we'll link stuff up above where there's just these spines that go up, 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 up into the mountains. And you just hike, hike, hike. And once you get to the top, it gets narrower and narrower and narrower. And at the top, you just... You have like two feet standing on the top of the mountain. It was freaky as crazy freaky. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> but uh, look at this. This is, this is, uh, this is death defined. So when we arrived in Moria, we'd actually been traveling for a lot of months. It was really nice to have some civilization. I went and I got a beer. Never mind. The four baguettes. So we went out and got some pizza one night, I think. And that was about it, I think. <laughs> it was nice to be around people. It's there was lots of boats there. There was lots of vacationers. There was like uh, lots of outrigger, beautiful outrigger canoes at sunset. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was like just picture perfect. Huge soaring mountains. The scenery in Moria is breathtaking. The and lagoon was just incredible. There's this spot in the lagoon. It's called Stingray City, and all these stingrays come in there because they just kind of like nuzzle up to you. And yeah, they're freaking. It's almost crazy. like they grope your boobs if you're a they're woman. <laughs> they come like pain. right up. They they're creepy feeling, but they're super cute in a weird way. There's huge resorts there, and they're absolutely gorgeous resorts. Yeah. So. Moria is probably the easiest place for you to get to uh, that we visited yep. because it's like probably a direct flight into Tahiti and a little hop over to Moria super quick and then you're in like luxury resort 
Central. And you can do it, there's kiting there, there's hiking, there's lagoon tours, there's, it's just awesome. It's an awesome place. Even though it's very touristy, it's still a beautiful place and we loved it there. And in Tahiti, you can get tattoos. Actually, one of our followers got a tattoo because we got a tattoo from the same artist. Now that's, that's devotion. Yeah, one of our followers, he sent us a pic. It was awesome. Totally yeah. different and so awesome. Number nine, let's talk about number nine. Do we need a drum roll for every single one? I think, we, uh, one more drum roll please. One more. <laughs> All right. How good. Okay, let's talk about Minerva Reef. It's about two days south of Tonga and a little bit further away from Fiji. And basically you hit Minerva Reef if you're sailing south to New Zealand. And it's a great stopover. And it's one of those places where you stick your hand on your rock and you come out with a giant lobster. It's untouched, it's beautiful. Hardly anyone goes there. Probably the most alive, insane coral and crazy sharks that we've seen outside the pass. Dove the wall outside the pass and snorkeled it and it was awesome. Unspoiled. It, it's on the list because it's unspoiled and the lobsters are king. Now, how are you gonna get there? It's gonna be hard to get there. One, you could buy a sailboat and sail there from New Zealand or from Fiji. Two, you could crew on a sailboat. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way if you're not gonna buy your own boat. And there's lots of boats looking for crew that leave from both Tonga and Fiji and head yep. south to New Zealand. So they all kind of converge down there around November, December because they're everyone's escaping cyclone season and vice versa when the seasons change and then they come back up from New Zealand um, anywhere between March and like June, July. Okay. It's right. hot. It's really hot. Do you want me to fan you? Yeah, that'd be good. <gasps> My sunglasses are fogging up. Okay, let's move to number eight. Drum roll, please. Give me one more. Okay. Bulanga in it's Fiji. Bulanga. Bulanga? Bulanga. I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> Everyone calls it different. It's called Fulanga. It's spelled it Bulanga. Fiji. Anyways, it's on the southeast corner of Fiji. It's pretty unspoilt. And the people are fantastic. So basically they have a system and you're assigned a family and that family adopts you for the time that you're there. And they help you and you help them if you can. And it's one of the most fun experiences we had because of that sort of adoption integration and thing. You can go to church, you can do not go to church, you can you can do whatever you want there and they'll take you up for their hikes, they'll show you their skulls, their place. And while you're not hanging out with the families in the village, you could go and explore the lagoon, which is crazy because there's these awesome rock formations. The lagoon is made up of limestone, so all these rocks have kind of corroded uh, around the base, which means they make mushroom islands, and it's just gorgeous, gorgeous spot. There's kiting, there's diving in the past. To get there, you may need to charter a float plane, or you could, there's a lot of actually charter boats in Fiji. You could probably do a custom charter on a sailboat. Sweet. Sweet. And head head to Flonga. It's awesome there. And hi Tui and Cora. Cora, those are the people Cora. that adopt this. Cora and yeah. Tui. <laughs> Keep my wine in my cup. Number seven happened at the end of the first season in the South Pacific, and it was located in New Zealand. Yes, New Zealand, we love you. We had a blast. For one, they have fantastic wine in New Zealand. <laughs> Thank you very much. And for two, they have amazing parks and wonderful hiking. And the Bay of Islands is just basically one giant park where you can go hiking and they have civilization. Frick man, we really liked it there. Uh, we hiked like crazy in the Bay of Islands. We were there on the shoulder season. So we were there a bit early, I think in November, uh, which means it was just a little bit cold still. And I went swimming exactly once. It meant that there was no one around and it meant that we could go hiking and not see anyone. Yeah, it was awesome. You'd cozy up at night in the boat on your blanket and watch a movie, make some meatballs and drink some red wine. It's the perfect spot. Now in December, it actually does warm up a lot in, in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. It apparently gets really busy. We weren't there when it was like that. There's also fantastic fishing for snapper. Yeah, you can get kingfish too. Kingfish are awesome tasting, probably the best sashimi. But the snapper was so much fun. It's like you drop the line in the water and book, you have a snapper. And then you drop the line in the water and boom, you have another snapper and that's dinner. Do they make a bunk noise? You're doing it on little rods, so they go <laughs> They're fun. How can our viewers get there? Oh, the Bay of Islands is pretty easy to get to. 
Um, you basically just fly into New Zealand and somehow fly to the north of New Zealand and or take a bus or rent a car or whatever. From there you can either take ferries and go camping on the islands or you can probably take rent a boat or charter a boat but really camping on the islands would have been fantastic. It was there was like no one there when we were there because it was a bit chilly but it, I think that's what I'd do if I didn't have a boat. It's really civilized, it's really safe, it's just beautiful. And yeah, it's, and it's, it's, it's easy to get spot. around. What's number six, Ashley? Number six is Vanuatu. We put in a whole damn country. Yeah, we loved all of Vanuatu. What were the highlights? Dude, Vanuatu is one of those countries that's really off the beaten path. We started off in the southern part of Vanuatu in an island called Tana. And Tana has one of the most active and one of the most accessible volcanoes in the world. It's called Mount Yasor. It is insane how close you can get. You basically have to dodge the molten lava <laughs> as it comes out. Sad to be leaving this volcano. <laughs> and then the people in Tana are also really kind and really friendly. They all drink kava. Yeah, kava is a root uh, that they mush up and then they pour water over and then strain it through a dirty t shirt into some dirty bucket <laughs> and then they pass it around. You drink enough of it and you just kind of mellow out. It basically, just takes all your anxiety away. Kind of like marijuana. Not that I've ever done any illicit drugs. I don't even drink. If you head further north in Vanuatu, you get to Santo. Santo was a American base in World War II and they had a ton of like naval big ships. And one of their big ships uh, hit a, one of their own landmines there called the Coolidge and is the most accessible divable wreck in the world. Basically you can get to it from shore. So you walk into the water from shore and you're on this huge wreck that starts off at like 15 meters and goes down to like 60 or something. There's just cool shit on that what, boat. What Ashley's not mentioning is there's less safety regulations in Vanuatu. So they take you inside of this wreck. Uh, they penetrate it, full penetration dives. They have a guide with you, so it's very safe. But it is incredible what you see in there. There's old fuel tanks, there's mirrors, there's toothbrushes, there's, I don't know, all sorts of stuff, medical supplies, bullets. The Coolidge was a converted cruise ship, so it's, it's, a, pre, it's a pretty interesting mishmash of like green toilets and yellow tiles and like, yeah. it's like of an era. And it's really, really amazing. And it's amazing to see it all underwater. Tanks and the, there's tanks in the damn thing. It, it's, it's, it's the best dive we've ever done and it's called the SS Coolidge. Now you can get to Vanuatu quite easily either from New Zealand or probably from America or Australia. Vanuatu is really connected with inter-island flights but you'll probably land in Vilo. It's international airport there. And then from there you take a puddle jumper and then there's tons of dive shops and accommodation. Go down to Tana. You can stay with the locals. You can live in a hut or you can stay in a bit nicer place and go go climb up a volcano. You can go see some land diving. We weren't there in the right season, but go see it, go check that out. Like then you go dive the Coolidge. I'd say Vanuatu adventure wise, if you were planning a, a vacation and didn't have a sailboat, it's probably like one of the coolest places you could go and have like a ridiculous adventure. I think it's super cool and I think it's super safe um, and uh, super adventurous. Super, super duper. Sorry, did I say super too many times? <laughs> At least I'm not saying awesome today. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little awesome item. Oh my god, we're at number five! Tonga was one of our favorite places. It was awesome. You could go. You said awesome. Oh, I did say awesome. Tropical island after deserted tropical island. But our favorite places in the, the whole country were the Vavao group and the Hapai group. So there's caves. You can snorkel into caves. It's free diving. It's just amazing. It's super accessible. Really, really, really cool caves. She's, she's not lying. Like Vavao is insane. From there we went out and we had one of the best kite spots. You said it was one of your favorite kite sessions of all time. Perfect little islands all over the place. I think there's some pretty gorgeous resorts on some of those islands. They're kind of eco resorts, uh, so they're off the grid, but some of them are still quite a bit fancy. I really recommend going to Vavao. After we went through the Vavao group, we headed south to the Hapai group. And in both places, we did it in the Hapai group, but you can swim with the whales. Humpback Again. whales. They were right by your boat. You had to be careful not to hit them. And it's something that you can only do in Tonga because every other place doesn't let you actually jump in the water with these giant sea creatures. And I don't know, I felt pretty safe until they took a swing at me, but you know. <laughs> 
Other than that, it was awesome. Bapau, which is at the very northern part of Tonga, there's a moorings charter fleet where you can rent some catamarans. Great little beaches, great little islands, and a little bit of kiting. And swimming with the whales. The Hapai group, which is just a little bit further south, you can get to also with airplanes. Yeah, there's lots of eco resorts there, and some of them cater to kiting because there's some fantastic yeah. kite spots there. We, we kited a lot there. Like, we had some of the best kite sessions we had in all of the South Pacific right there. Like, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, so. Between the, the skinny little island and the reef, it was like flat water, yeah. and then you go play in the waves of the reef, and like, it was awesome. You said, I said it again. You can't say awesome anymore. I'm sorry, I'll, this is my, I'm not making any promises. I think we have to end it there. Tonga is amazing because, I said amazing, but not super, that's okay, right? Just, <laughs> Here, number four. This is this is hers. Galapagos. I almost put this as number one. Galapagos is cool. Okay, it's unique. It's completely rad. I met made friends with all the animals there. I had little friendly seals on the back deck, which were poopy and disgusting. They were the cutest little things I've ever seen. I loved the seals. The boobies that we went and checked out, where they made it and did their little dance. Oh my gosh, they were amazing. The boobies are pretty amazing. And then those giant tortoises. Oh my gosh, boom, boom, boom. They were the hugest, slowest little th things. We even got to see them having sex. Took, takes probably like 14 hours or something. Oh, it's exhausting. It's exhausting <laughs> watching them have sex. <laughs> Lots of tours, kind of expensive, but worth it. Like it was absolutely worth it for me. I can't believe that, like, ah, ah, I'm speechless. I love the Galapagos. I loved every little thing about the Galapagos. There's surfing if you're into that. We, we don't surf very well, but we probably could have taken lessons there. The diving is meant to be spectacular. We didn't know how to dive back then. Yeah, we weren't diving then. It was one of the most unique places we've been. One of the most set up for tourist places we've been. How, how can our viewers get there, Ashley? The Galapagos is so set up for tourism. I'm not sure if you need a permit to get there. We had to apply way beforehand and get permits to go there, but it should be very accessible. If you want to go to the Galapagos, go. I think we saw two types of tourists there. Uh, well, three. One, us, which is like the yachties. Two, people on land that would rent like a hotel or something and then do day tours from there. And then three was, yeah, mini cruise ships where people would probably fly into the Galapagos, I would think, get on that cruise ship, go around the Galapagos to several sites, do dives, and then come back and then probably fly out. So if I were to go back to the Galapagos, I'd go on land and then I'd take one of those ships because yeah. I think you'd yeah. see way more. It's so cool. You're <laughs> happier than a seal in seal shit. That's very stinky. Hey, you pooped all over my boat, man. Jesus, serious? All right, number three, we have the Lusiades. The L eastern Lus part of Papua New Guinea. <laughs> is where the Lusiades are. And this place is a step back in time. I can't explain to you, the people are genuine. The cultures are as they were 50 years ago. The place is the most authentic place we've ever been to. They are mm -hmm. struggling sometimes to find water. The people there make this place, or one of the best places we've cruised. And then they have these canoes, these massive canoes, with one outrigger. And then they have a massive sail made out of a, a tarp, like a blue tarp. And they call those sailows. And they sail from island to island or to the mainland Papua New Guinea on those for days on end. It was eye-opening to go there. And it was one of those places that I think changed this trip for us to realize how, how grateful we should be for living the life we do. Absolutely. It's one of those places where you realize how rich the people are in terms of family and, 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 and just togetherness. It's subsistence living there. So they are living off whatever they can provide for themselves, by themselves, with some small supplements from the main shops, which are far, kind of far away, and you have to take either the sail out there, so they take their, their sailing canoes a full day or two days sometimes to go to some of the mainland and, and get some things. So supplies are very limited. They are relatively very poor uh, in this regard. There isn't a lot of work out there for them, so they're not making cash money. So when a yacht comes in, there's a few things they're always looking to trade. They have great fresh fruit and fresh stuff. Yep. 
you know, there was the one time we made a trade. We gave a guy a, a snorkel mask. We traded a snorkel mask for a baggie. Uh, and he's like, oh, this is amazing. And he's like, you changed my life. Like, I know there's a lot of concern about Papua New Guinea being unsafe, but the outer islands are very much safe and very much okay to go to. So how can people get there? How can our viewers get there, Ash? There are some yacht charters, I think, that operate in that, but there are definitely charter boats that do go into the Louisiades. Or you can fly into maybe Mishima and then you can hire someone. If you if you pay someone, they'll let you crash. And it won't be a lot of money, but they'll let you crash in one of their, their, their houses. This, this could be one of those vacations that is super adventurous. Yeah, take <laughs> you, everything you need. <laughs> Except they, they will feed you. They w are super friendly people. But they will take care of you, they will house you, they will feed you, they will... Water's a bit scarce, so maybe bring some water. Yes. All right, we're down oh, to number, number two. two. What's number one, if that's number two? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I know what number one is. Yeah. You're gonna have to wait for it, I'm sorry. Number two is the Marquesas, and I had this as number one. It was really a tie. The Marquesas is part of French Polynesia, and it's the first island we hit after crossing the, the South Pacific. Absolutely breathtaking arriving into this group of islands. Huge, soaring peak. It's one of those places you remember because this is the first land you see after that many days at sea. 20 day or 30 day crossing. Or some people it takes 40 if you don't stop at the Galapagos. We had an amazing time hiking there. A lot of rain, crazy, rugged, wet, rough. The dancing there, the people were crazy. The, like the culture was, was really alive there. They were practicing for the Hiva, so there was a lot of dance. Crazy tattoos. Our tattoos are a of yeah. the Ke Kijan style. They had awesome tattoos. Half oh. their face would be, be tattooed. Beautiful people, really friendly. We had a freaking blast there. Uh, and it was our first introduction to sort of the islands of the south. They all speak French, so English isn't fully understood everywhere, but there is still English speaking around. It was the first spot where I'd caught my first, what what I thought was a monster yellowfin tuna. <laughs> Turned out to be a average size yellowfin. <laughs> I remember being in the anchorage there and I remember looking out the back and that, sure enough there's big yellowfins just jumping like I don't know under 200 oh, yards. Oh manta rays coming right up and you could jump in and swim they, with they, them. They, they would just come at you like these big mouths like huge mouths. The people, the culture, the dancing, the music, the it was just one of those places that kind of has it all. Go there. Just go there. It's epic to go there, by the way. Yeah. So you have to fly probably into Tahiti. Then you probably get another flight into one of the other islands, maybe Hiva Oa, maybe Nuku Hiva. And then from there, they have a cargo ship that goes through there that has some cabins for, for people, which I think would be a cool way to explore if you don't have your own sailboat. Like Fatu Hiva doesn't have an airstrip and there's no float planes because it's, it's quite rugged. Like it was rough. Find your way there. And if you, if you do make it there on your own sailboat, stay longer than you think. It's one of those places I can't wait to get back to in my life. We were so keen on seeing the rest of French Polynesia. I could have spent longer there. Yeah, I remember the first time we walked on land after that many days at sea, and I remember walking to this pristine waterfall that was just coming out of nowhere. Pretty neat to see other people. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> and All right. This needs a drum roll because it's number one. Oh, we're so cheesy, it's funny. It's cheesy, isn't it? Maybe we should cut that out. <laughs> the number one place on our top 10 of the South Pacific tour was the... Tuamotus. In French Polynesia. It is a huge, vast area of atolls. So they're basically sunk volcanoes, which means there's a ring and then inside that ring, uh, you can put your yacht and kind of have some shelter. But then there's just a couple spots usually, maybe one or two spots in that ring where water flows in and out. And those are the passes and that's where all the fish and sharks and animals congregate. It was our first ever pass dive. And it was intense. It was, it was crazy. It was probably at like five or six knots. And we were just flying across the reef and it was beautiful, breathtaking. A live coral, beautiful fish, sharks and turtles and... Manta rays, groupers, yeah. eels. Ah, 
Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it, was it was like insane. sensory overload, and it was the it was amazing. And we're just like, oh my gosh, this is so great. And Let's do it again. So we did it a few times, and then we thought every dive should be like that. We've compared every dive since to the two Motus. To that particular Aurora dive. I mean, we got through the pass, and you're inside, and you're just kind of you're only in like a couple meters of water, just floating there, and you're about to climb back into the dinghy, which is bobbing on the surface because there's a crazy rip current. A manta ray comes up and tries to do your GoPro. So like, <laughs> I don't know, why. where does that happen in the world? It just doesn't happen. Like The water clarity was just next to nothing. see for miles, like you could see forever. And there's so many white tip sharks and greys and black yeah. tips and Diving the pass at Fakarava after the group responding, the, the shark population yeah. there was insane. The little sharks, oh, and Tao, when you tried to entice them with your foot and they actually tried to take a bite. That was a real learning lesson. Yeah. I still say that I could go back and live there for the rest of my life. I might miss the hiking because it was all flat. If you're into diving or into kiteboarding, the two motus is a must. You can fly into, uh, say, Tahiti. You can probably get a paddle dropper to Fakarava, and Fakarava South Pass yeah, has some accommodation. There's also uh, some cruise ships. They'll have it all figured out with the tides, because usually, you only want to dive passes at certain incoming tide, for example, because you don't want to get sucked out. You want to get always spat into the lagoon. Yeah, there's there's a few options, and we'll link as much as we can down below. But yeah, go there if you can. You won't regret it. I mean, you've got this huge ring of coral, beautiful crystal clear lagoon waters. Normally, we just don't get that clarity inside a lagoon. Like, it's insane. We scratch the surface of islands that you can go there. If you go there, just go see a whole, as many as you can. But next time we cir circumnavigate, we'll probably stay for a year. No, I don't know about that. Yeah, I, like, I'm serious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're staying, apparently. <laughs> staying there. <laughs> He's going to learn French. It'll be good for him. Je ne parle pas français. Oui. What? <laughs> what? How do you say I would want one more beer? Uh, how would you say it? Uno. Uno? That's, Is it uno? That's Spanish. All right, that concludes our list. That's our top 10 of our cruise through the South Pacific on Hoa. And we miss places and we are going to go back next time and do more places. Next loop. We haven't even finished this one, but we're already talking about the next one. But if you're just kind of like trying to go on vacation, this might give you some idea of where you could go. Yeah, it's a good way to keep the dream alive.